I think the most difficult thing, George, was the realisation at that point that the police weren't looking for Madeline and that they were just focused really on trying to, I guess, blame us and for it all to be over. And obviously that is, you know, one of the most damaging things that could then happen to the search really was for the police to stop looking and to convince the general public as well that we were somehow involved. I got nightmares in my head, I feel Thoughts build up until I can't feel My mind fills up into a creature And it haunts me somewhere much deeper I got nightmares in my head, I feel Thoughts build up until I can't hear That my mind fills up into a creature And it haunts me somewhere much deeper Hello and welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most authentic voice in true crime. Many who know the Madeleine McCann case, one of the most heavily reported missing person cases in modern history, are familiar with the canine narrative. Even those who know it back to front and believe it, I would wager, still don't know the full story. I'd like to ask those who consider themselves experts on this case to weigh in in the comments at the end of this analysis and let me know if you've learned anything or not based on this third clue, the number three clue we all missed. This analysis is directed more towards the doubters of the dog narrative or indeed the believers of the intruder, the stranger intruder narrative. Sometimes a shift in perspective is what's required in order to see what we cannot see even after 15 years of trying to see. But before we get to that, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. Bear in mind, this is the third in a series. I'll put uh, links to the number one and number two clues we all missed if you haven't seen that. And if you like, I can also do the number four clue we all missed, which has got to do with the refrigerators. By the way, apologies in advance for my, th my voice. I've got a bit of a sore throat again. I can't really believe it, but that it is what it is. Uh, in any event, if you're enjoying this analysis, please like, share, leave a comment. You can also hit the thanks button and let's get started. Now, typically the canine narrative in the McCann case can be summarized by three short video clips that, when, when put together, comprise less than five minutes, and, and many of us have seen them. Those who doubt or dispute the many alerts you see captured in this video um, in this footage, believe that they are multiple false alerts or simply ignorant of the efficacy of cadaver dogs or both. In this analysis, we're going to look beyond the alerts in apartment 5A, the alerts in the villa, and the alerts to certain items of Kate McCann's clothing on Cuddle Cat and the Renault Scenic. We're going to actually see how these alerts were made in a wider context. And so what we're going to do is we're going to test this narrative of false alerts and as it happens, test whether these dogs are up, up to snuff after all. So did you know that when Martin Grimes pitched up in Pride de Luge in the first week of August 2007, that was three long months after Madeline vanished, Eddie, the cadaver dog, and Keela, the blood dog, they weren't simply taken straight to apartment 5A. Did you know that? In fact, the dogs were instructed to search five different apartments in the Ocean Club complex. Do you think you had kind of a similar amount of alerting in each of, each of, those, com each of those apartments? They also were taken to Robert Murat's property, which is just down the road. I've actually been there. And then they also were taken to Western Beach and Eastern Beach and 10 separate vehicles. In effect, they were sent through... 18 separate locations or entities. How many alerts, or if you like, false alerts, occurred in areas that had nothing to do with the McCanns? Well, let's have a look. And this is from the original discovery from uh, the files of the Polizia Judiciario, uh, often simply referred to as the PJ files. I'll put links to the relevant documents dealing with these searches in the description. Now, let's start with the search of the first Aguido, Robert Murat's property, and this is from the discovery. Murat's property was subjected to a search for human remains or blood-stained articles, 
What that basically means is that both dogs searched his property. The outside of of the property was stripped of vegetation and after the ground being probed was searched by the EVRD dog, which is the cadaver dog. In other words, they even did a um, ground penetrating radar uh, search. That's how I understand that language. They say the inside of the property was then searched by the dog. There were no alert indications and no human remains were located. Now, obviously, this search of the home and the garden was filmed and probably went on for half an hour, perhaps an hour or even longer. I think it would be very boring to watch, except that at no point do either of the dogs alert. Next, let's deal with the searches of apartments 5B, 5D, H5 and 4G. Apartment B. We searched this apartment with the victim recovery dog, that's the cadaver dog, Eddie, and he has shown no interest, no alerts in the flat for what he trained to find. Um, In other words, cadaver traces. So we finished. Apartment 5D. We've put the victim recovery dog, that's Eddie, the cadaver dog, through this apartment. The only interest has been in some food that he has found. Other than that, there's no interest, no alerts in anything that he has been taught to tell me that he has found. Apartment H5. We searched this apartment and Eddie hasn't shown any interest in this particular apartment apart from around the table where there's a tennis ball, which is how we reward the dog for finding things. As soon as we removed the tennis ball, the interest was gone. And so it was a negative search, no alerts. On to apartment 4G. We searched the apartment using the victim recovery dog, that's Eddie. No response, no alerts negative search. The longest description for what Eddie did in these four apartments where there were no alerts is for apartment H5, which is four lines. The narrative for apartment 5A spans 48 lines, 10 times more than H5. Curiously, although the dog showed no interest in the exterior of Murat's property in terms of the gardens, when taken along the outside of the apartments, there was some interest. According to the discovery, the outside perimeter of apartments, we've searched the outer perimeter and there is some interest here, but it will take some further examination to see what's going on. Incidentally, in terms of the search outside apartment 5A, they found a cadaver alert immediately below the balcony. That's besides the alerts they found inside. Now, what this suggests is that certainly based on the the canine evidence, It appears that a deceased person or child may have been removed from one of the apartments based on this canine narrative. Now let's deal with the searches through 10 different vehicles. These vehicles included 1. An Opel Corsa, number plate 75AG62. 2. A Fiat Punto, number plate 4549ER. 3. A Peugeot 205, number plate RI9603. 4. Renault Scenic, number plate 59DA27. 5. Skoda Fabia, number plate 9626VE. 6. Volkswagen Transporter, number plate 4477KD. 7. Nissan Patrol, number plate VH2422. 8. Volkswagen Passat, number plate 5712HP. Number 9. Audi A4, number plate 1091 FP, and number 10, Renault Kangoo, number plate 0750 UI. On the 6th of August 2007, at about 17 minutes past 3, obviously in the afternoon, a sniffer dog inspection was carried out, and the dog Eddie, uh, which detects cadaver odor, searched the whole of the floor of the underground car park where the cars were parked, with the following results. So, These are the following results of searching all 10 of these vehicles. 10 minutes after initiating the search at 15.27 or 27 minutes past 3, Eddie marked on vehicle number 4, the Renault Scenic number plate 59DA27, which is the rental car that was currently being used by Jerry and Kate McCann. In fact, the McCanns started renting that vehicle on the 27th of May, which is about 24 days, more than three weeks after Madeline vanished, and would continue to use that vehicle even after this cadaver search, 
more than a month later, um, in um, I think September, um, they still had it, and then it was only given back at the end of September. And uh, they used this vehicle to drive to the airport and back to Britain. Now, when we examine the video footage that's been released, it looks like Eddie immediately heads to the Renault Scenic and alerts within a few seconds. In fact, it took 10 minutes for the dog to investigate some or all of the other nine vehicles before it alerted uh, for the first time and on vehicle number four. At this point, after Eddie alerted, vehicle number four with license plate 59DA27 was taken to the third floor of the same underground parking lot and subjected to a forensic search by officers. According to the discovery, a second sniffer dog inspection began very early the next morning, about 13 hours later, at 0349 on the 7th of August by the dog Keeler, which detected human blood remains, and the following results were noted. At 3.53, in other words, four minutes after initiating the search, Keeler marked a zone, Keeler's the blood dog, on the right inferior side of the inside of the luggage compartment of the vehicle. Then another, what is it, seven, 18 minutes later, Keeler marked the compartment on the driver's side, which was seen to contain the vehicle's key of a plastic electronic type with a key ring from the budget car rental agency. The cops couldn't believe what they were seeing. They didn't believe that the blood dog was actually alerting to the key of the vehicle. So in order to make sure, two minutes later, they removed the key and hid the key elsewhere in the underground park. They then let Keeler search again, as per the report, with the aim of confirming whether the dog had effectively alerted to the vehicle's key, which was inside the compartment, well, originally inside the compartment on the driver's side at 0413, 13 minutes past four that morning, the key in question was removed from the vehicle and hidden in a place far from the vehicle on the third floor of the underground car park. At about 414, so a minute later, it was observed that the dog marked the area, in other words, alerted at the area of a box containing sand from the fire service, under which, underneath which effectively the vehicle's key had been hidden. Isn't that amazing? Now they decided to do the same test with Eddie, the cadaver dog, on the same item. What do you think? Do you think the cadaver dog would find traces of a human corpse on the key fob to the Renault Scenic? According to the discovery, at approximately 0450, 10 to 5 in the morning, a new sniffer dog inspection was carried out using the dog Eddie, which detects cadaver odor using the vehicle key, which for this purpose was hidden on the fourth floor, of the underground car park far away from the vehicle. At about 4.51, it was observed that the dog alerted the area of the box containing sand from the fire service, underneath which the key had been hidden. In other words, the cadaver dog alerted to the key of the Renault Scenic and so did the blood dog. In effect, the dogs went through five apartments, one house, one villa, and only alerted to apartment 5A and inside the villa where Madeline's toy cuddle cat had been. Two dogs both alerting in the same apartment. There's also a video of this, the toy being moved and the dog alerting again. In terms of the 10 vehicles, 9 vehicles have no alerts and once again both dogs alert to the same vehicle. A defense attorney might say, so what? Maybe, maybe there was a dead body in apartment 5A. Maybe it's just bad luck or a coincidence. But I think it strains credulity to breaking point to imagine a dead body in apartment 5A, which then moves to the villa and seems to move, move there via the same vehicle the McCann's rented. The other thing that I think is interesting is, is it possible that someone picked up a cadaver with their hands, right? And it is because of that that they immediately then touch the key, that that is how the cadaver odor ended up on the key fob. Is that the process for, for that to have happened? Incidentally, this vehicle, the Renault Scenic, had just over 3,000 kilometers on the clock when the McCanns got it on the 27th of May. They returned it with 14,443 kilometers on the clock, which means they had amassed over, well, they amassed 11,227 kilometers while it was in their possession. 
If you divide 11,227 by the number of days the McCann's had the vehicle, it averages to about 93 kilometers per day. That's every single day driving almost 100 kilometers. The bill for renting the vehicle for, for four months straight must have been colossal. But here's the clincher. On September 11th, 2007, it was revealed that body fluids discovered in the tire well of the McCann's Renault were an 88% DNA match to Madeline. That was according to police sources. And you can read about these. This is all in the media narrative. In a report published by Scotland's Herald newspaper, claims were made that samples of Madeline's hair were apparently also found in the vehicle. Quoting from the article, Police searching the car also found so much of Madeline's hair that it could not have been transferred from a blanket or clothes and must have come directly from her body. But uh, it turned out not to be as simple as that. A British lab claimed that the DNA sample was, was, wasn't blood but bodily fluid, while the head scientist, a guy called Dr. Lowe, concluded, quote, the sample is too complex for meaningful interpretation. The McCanns would argue that 88% could also have been a match for their other children and in some publications argue that the blood in the vehicle came from fish or beef bought in the form of groceries that had perhaps leaked out of a bag. To reiterate, these fluids were found in the upholstery in the boot compartment of the Renault Scenic. What do you think about this? Thank you for listening and I'll see you guys next time. 